Styles, and you're watching Bretto Live. What is going on, guys? Bretto Live back with another video, and welcome to the Week in Review, episode 162. This is where we go over Raw and SmackDown in a WWE action figure setup style. You guys know the deal. Drop your ratings down in the comments down below for Monday Night Raw and SmackDown. I want to see what you guys thought about the shows this week. Uh, we're going to be talking about Naomi and Sasha Banks. We're going to be talking about Monday Night Raw. We're going to be talking about SmackDown. So without further ado, let's do this. Before we even get started, you guys are not going to want to miss it. Check out the match between Bread Alive and Brody. It is on the channel. Go to the Bread Alive YouTube channel or you can click the link up in the top right to check out the match. It's a very good match. Feel free to check out the match. And without further ado, we're going to jump into Raw. We opened up Monday Night Raw with the commentators Jimmy Smith, Corey Graves, and Byron Saxton announcing a couple matches that are going to be happening on Monday Night Raw. The opening match that we'd see in the beginning, Bobby Lashley versus Omas in a steel cage, as well as a six-pack challenge that we'd see later in the show. Cons uh, consisting of Nikki Cross, Dewdrop, Sasha Banks, Naomi, and a uh, and Asuka, and Becky Lynch. Winner will face ba uh, Bianca Belair at Hell in a Cell for the Raw Women's Championship. That match never happened. It was actually changed to Asuka versus Becky Lynch, uh, supposedly because Sasha Banks and Naomi disagreed with some creative decisions by, by Vince McMahon and the creative team that they just kind of walked out of the arena so then they didn't have to go through with what they had planned for them, which is probably jobbing in this six-pack challenge to have Asuka win. Uh, so they weren't down for that, and honestly, pathetic in my opinion. Pathetic of Sasha Banks and Naomi. Like, some people's dream is to be uh, in the WWE and be in the wrestling business, and you're just going to throw it out the window just like that because you disagree with some creative decisions. You're just going to walk out? You're literally just going to walk out of your job. That's pretty pathetic if you ask me. Um, but whatever. I, I think that's very unprofessional of them. But uh, I think Sasha Banks definitely started it off, and then Naomi kind of just followed because Naomi, she put up with that Sonya Deville crap for months. So Naomi could put up with some crap, but Banks was just probably, oh, I'm out of here, and then Naomi kind of just followed. Um, but yeah, is it a work? Is it part of Vince's storyline? Obviously, they're trying not to to say that it's part of the storyline, but it very well could be. Are they going to relinquish the women's tag titles? I don't know. But moving into the main uh, the main show here, it is opening match. It was Omas. Yes, I know. That's Mark Henry. It was Omas versus MVP one-on-one -on -one inside of a steel cage. This match was a solid match to open up the show. There was some hard-hitting action inside of the steel cage. In the end, we saw Omas pick up Bobby Lashley, send him through the cage wall, and I'm like, oh my god, Lashley, roll off the cage, and you'll win. He did. He rolls off the cage after he got sent through the wall, and he won the match. I was like, okay, that was pretty cool. So then they don't have to get Omas pinned again, and then they don't have to get Bobby Lashley pinned again, but Omas still loses, if that makes any sense. So it works out perfectly. Hopefully this rivalry ends, and Bobby Lashley could go on to bigger and better things. Maybe the Tribal Chief, Roman Reigns. I think that would be freaking epic. But yeah, solid way to open up the show. Moving over here, Judgment Day. They cut a promo backstage, and they were talking about how they're looking for recruits. They're trying to build Judgment Day. It's not only a ever going to be Damian Priest, Rhea Ripley, and Edge. They want more recruits, and they even talked. Well, they didn't talk to, but they were speaking to, like, via this promo, AJ Styles. They're like, AJ, Finn, we could use you guys. We could use you guys in Judgment Day. So he, run, he wants to recruit AJ or Finn. Who's going to turn? Finn or AJ? I don't know. We'll see. But yeah, that was a pretty solid promo. Moving over here, Cody Rhodes, he cut a promo in the center of the ring. Talking about Seth Rollins, of course, they're continuing this rivalry. It's definitely going to be for the last time. If it's not, Dude, I'm going to flip out. But yes, this is going to be the third match consecutively. And uh, Seth, or I believe it was Cody Rhodes. He challenged Seth Rollins to a hell in a cell match. And it's going to happen. Uh, at the cell, which I'm really excited for. Uh, Cody Rhodes versus Seth Rollins inside of the cell. That's what they built to in this promo. And whoa, I am freaking excited. That is going to be a kick butt match. I guarantee Cody Rhodes bleeds. It's going to be freaking dope. As far as the promo goes with Cody Rhodes, I really enjoyed it. Moving over here is a match. Jimmy Uso going up against Matt Riddle one on one. This match was just okay. Um, in the end, we saw Jay Uso trying to cheat, giving Jimmy Uso leverage, but the ref saw it this time. He kicked out Jay Uso from ringside. And then that distracted Jimmy in order for Riddle to pick up the victory. And then, of course, that's building to their tag team unification match that is going to be happening on SmackDown, which I will also talk about in this video. Um, But yeah, 
I'm interested to see what's going to happen in that unification match. More than likely a disqualification. But, yes, this match was just okay. Jimmy Uso took the L. Riddle took the dub. Moving over here, it was uh, uh, Alexa Bliss going up against Sonya Deville again. Second week in a row. I don't need to see this again. Uh, but anyways, Alexa Bliss was... Well, first of all, Alexa Bliss came out with a new theme song, and it sucks, dude. Literally, last week they gave us her original theme song, which I'm actually into. Um, but then they give us this garbage one this week. I'm like, why wouldn't you just keep the one that we freaking had last week? Like, Vince. Why, dude? But whatever. In the end, uh, Alexa Bliss was able to hit a DDT on Sonya Deville. One, two, three. That was it. I wasn't into it. It was lame. Moving over here, it was Chad Gable uh, going up against Ezekiel, Elias' younger brother. It was one-on-one. -on -one. Match was okay. Ezekiel was able to pick up the victory. And Kevin Owens on commentary was pretty cool. Otis kind of ran in at the end, trying to get his hands on Ezekiel, but it didn't really work out. Ezekiel was able to escape. But yeah, Ezekiel picked up the victory. Not too bad. Moving over here, Lacey Evans' debut here on Monday Night Raw. She comes out. Or, or her re-debut, if you will. She comes out basically just talking about the men and uh, women that serve the country, basically. I mean, shout out to all of them, obviously. Um, mad respect to every single one of you that is in the armed forces, obviously. Um, but yes, Lacey Evans, she comes out, yeah, basically just talking about the men and women of the armed forces, which I thought was really cool. Is she a heel? Is she a face? I would assume she's a face. Um, but yeah, I'm interested to see where this is going to go. More than likely, I could see her winning the Raw Women's Championship. I'm not even going to lie. Uh, moving over here, it was a match. It was Los Lotharios tag team from SmackDown. So is the brand split over? What's going on with that? Uh, they went up against AJ Styles and Finn Balor. Uh, two on two, and they asked Liv Morgan to join them because in order for them to go up against Judgment Day, they got Rhea Ripley, so they needed one woman and one woman. They picked up Liv Morgan backstage, and Liv Morgan was a little hesitant. She was like, eh, I'll think about it, which I'm like, oh, that's odd. But then she ended up going out there with AJ and Finn, and then Los Lotharios obviously took the L. AJ and Styles and Finn Balor, they hit a phenomenal forum and a coup de grace in the end to pick up the victory, and then they all did the two sweet with Liv Morgan. Look at that, the click right there, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, I'm interested to see where it's going to go. More than likely, they're going to face Judgment Day at Hell in a Cell. Uh, but we shall see. Moving over here, it was... Oh, uh, this was kind of stupid in my opinion. It was freaking Mustafa Ali going up against Veer Mahan one-on-one. -on -one. Austin Theory made this match with Vince McMahon. Veer Mahan obviously decked Mustafa Ali. This was freaking lame. Miz was special guest referee too. Just literally all the odds have been stacked against Mustafa Ali, and I don't like it. It's so lame. But then after the match, Veer, Miz, and Austin uh, and Austin Theory, they just start just basically just embarrassing Mustafa Ali and then the Mysterios make the return they come down they target Veer Mahan and it looks like it's going to be Veer Mahan against um, the Mysterios in a two-on-one handicap match I don't know um but uh yeah this was all pretty crappy in my opinion moving over here was the main event of the show it was Becky Lynch going up against Asuka this was the match that they changed from the six-pack challenge that we were supposed to see uh honestly I prefer this more than the six-pack challenge uh but I mean still very unprofessional these two right here because dude that's so pathetic uh but whatever uh well I don't really know they can complete backstory you don't know what really happened but as far as what i've heard it's pretty pathetic uh but yeah becky lynch oscar one-on-one match was okay i wasn't really into it some people really enjoyed it i was just like eh, okay bianca Belair was on commentary she ended up getting on the apron as becky lynch was about to use an umbrella to uh her advantage to take out oscar while the ref wasn't distracted and then oscar used the green mist to the face of becky lynch and pinned becky lynch so it's gonna be oscar versus bianca Belair at hell in a cell for the raw women's championship which i'm looking forward to as far as the main event goes though it was mid, in my opinion. Oh, this entire show was mid, guys. Let me know what you guys thought down in the comments down below. Two out of five from me here on Monday Night Raw. And we're now, now we're going to jump into SmackDown. Continuing the week in review here with SmackDown. SmackDown was insanely mid up until the main event, of course, where it was the unification of the tag team titles, which we're going to talk about. But uh, before we get into that, I do have to talk about this all the filler to this freaking show. It was so mid up until the main event. But anyways, we're going to jump into the main show. Starting over here. Well, first, uh, the Bloodline cut a promo. Basically just talking about what's going to happen in the main event. But anyways, opening match. It was Shinsuke Nakamura going up against Sami Zayn one-on-one. -on -one. This is a match we already saw last week. Uh, and then the week after that. I think. So, I feel like we've seen this match multiple times already. I don't need to see it for a, a freaking another time here. This time, Sami Zayn was about to get counted out, and then Shinsuke Nakamura, right when Sami Zayn got back in the ring, was able to hit a keen Sasha right on him. One, two, three, and then Shinsuke Nakamura was able to pick up the victory over Sami Zayn, who supposedly thinks he's in the bloodline. Obviously, Roman Reigns has taken advantage, uh, advantage of him, of course, just so then he uh, acknowledges, you know, the tribal chief, you know what I'm saying? Um, But yeah, Nakamura was able to pick up the victory. I could care 
care freaking less. Moving over here, Walter, or should I say Gunther? Gunther went up against Drew Gulak. I don't need to see this, dude. I feel so bad for Drew Gulak. This is a man that's like actually pretty decent, like when it comes to in-ring action. Like he's literally really freaking good. Um, but yeah, he got freaking wrecked, obviously, by Gunther. Uh, and then Ludwig Kaiser was on ringside as well. They both came in the ring. They kind of just brutalized him after the match, too. I was like, bro, come on, bro. This is getting so lame. And then, of course, after the match, when uh, Gunther tried to get a little more beat down in on Drew Gulak, here comes Ricochet, the Intercontinental Champion. He runs down to the ring, gets Gunther and Ludwig Kaiser out of the ring. No physical altercation between them at all. It kind of just scared him away. Uh, and, yeah, I guess we got our next opponent here for Ricochet. It's going to be Gunther. And, of course, we have our next IC champ because there's no way Ricochet's beating Gunther. He is going to be heavily protected, I guarantee it. Moving over here is Raquel Gonzalez going up against freaking Shotzi, bro. Like, please just stop. I don't need to see Raquel Gonzalez go up against Shotzi. But anyway, she went up against Shotzi and obviously beat Shotzi Blackheart. Uh, One-on-one, -on -one, nothing crazy. It was a match, you know what I'm saying? Uh, moving over here, it was an episode. It was the longest episode of the Happy Talk I've ever seen. It was Happy Corbin trying to be entertaining in the center of the ring and cut a promo by himself. This was like a 10-minute promo, and I was so bored. Dude, I was so incredibly bored. I was like, oh my God, Corbin. Oh my, oh my God, I'm so bored, dude. This was so bad, in my opinion. Uh, Corbin was talking about how his continuation with the Madcap storyline, which we don't need the continuation of that freaking storyline, but whatever. And then it was a pretty cool visual when he destroyed the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal trophy because uh, Madcap's definitely going to be coming after him since he destroyed his trophy. So that was pretty cool. But as far as his promo goes, it was way too long, and I was like, oh, my God, end. Uh, moving over here, it was Butch versus Xavier Woods for what feels like the 10th time. One-on-one, -on -one, Butch, Xavier Woods again. No Sheamus and Ridge on ringside for this one. Uh... Xavier Woods was able to pick up the victory. Nothing crazy. And then after the match, Xavier Woods was walking up the ramp. He ran into Ridge and Sheamus. And then Butch attacked him from behind. It's pretty crazy. Pete Dunne and Butch, they very, they look very similar. Uh, I think it might be his younger brother. Maybe, you know, Pete Dunne's younger brother. I'm not sure. Let me know down in the comments down below. Um, but yeah, Xavier Woods took a dub, but then eventually took an L after they, after Butch attacked him after the match. But yeah, it was whatever. Moving over here before the main event, they did talk about Sasha Banks and Naomi, which I thought was kind of cool, uh, that they didn't just not, you know, um, talk about it. Is this a work? I think it could be, dude. I don't know. But if it is, like, that's freaking crazy. But if it's not, like, okay, yeah, dang. But, like, yeah, I already told you guys how I feel about it. But is it a work, though? Because they mentioned it on the show, and they don't normally do that. They don't normally mention behind-the-scenes stuff. So I don't know, man. But they're going to be having a Women's Tag Team Championship uh, tournament uh, that they talked about, which I could care freaking less. But, yeah. Yeah, at least they mentioned that. That was kind of cool. Moving over here, dude, it was the freaking unification match for the SmackDown and the Raw Tag Team titles. And wow, this was just, this brought so much emotion out of me that I've never really had for a wrestling match in the longest amount of time. Like, I was actually really invested in this match. I was invested in this story. And wow, they freaking delivered. Match was good. Usos, RK Bro. I wish it would have had more time. I really wish it would have had more time. I think it was only 15 minutes. Uh, nearing the beginning of the match, Riddle got injured. The referee, actually, he popped up the X. He popped up like the X, you know what I'm saying, uh, to show that Riddle was injured. And then it went to commercial. I'm like, oh, my God, please don't just have a one on two just randy orton versus the usos when they would come back from a commercial but no riddle stuck it out i'm not sure if he was actually injured um but yeah riddle did not seem too good after we came back from a commercial uh the match kept going it looked like riddle was about to do a move off the top rope but then the tribal chomp roman reigns pushes riddle off the top rope and well well yeah i just uh, speechless. Speechless. I'm like, really? You had to cheat, tribal chump. He sent Riddle off the top rope, and the Usos take care of it. They pick up the victory after Paul Heyman distracted the referee. I'm like, what? Dude, the bloodline. Freaking beasts. They literally unified the tag titles. Look at all the gold that the bloodline has. Freaking nuts. After the match. After the match. I don't know why they didn't do this during the match. Well, it might have been a disqualification. But still, after the match... 
Then they send Riddle through the announce desk, and they beat the living hell out of Randy Orton on ringside. He's laying next to the stairs nearly dead, and they're, show, they're showing crowd members on the freaking Titantron. I thought that was so awesome. WWE, props to you. Wow. They were showing crowd members literally in awe, mouths open. What? Like, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Like, dude, that was so sick. Like, I just loved everything about this. As far as RK Bro goes, I genuinely feel bad for them. I genuinely feel bad for Riddle. I genuinely feel bad for Randy Orton for just taking the beating that they did and losing the Raw Tag Team titles and losing the momentum that RK Bro had. Do I think it's over? Between RK Bro and the Usos, absolutely not. They're going to be coming back for the Raw Tag Titles. Uh, but yes, at the end of the night, the Bloodline reigned supreme, and I loved it. I could have went without the cheat from Roman Reigns. Um, but you guys can let me know what you guys thought down in the comments down below. I think it could have been a clean victory from the Usos. But anyways, that was SmackDown. As far as the entire rest of the show goes, so garbage. But the main event was solid. But when it comes to the main event, four out of five. Four to five when it comes to the main event, but the entire show in a whole, two out of five. Um, but yeah, guys, that was SmackDown setup style. Let me know your ratings for Raw and SmackDown down in the comments down below, and I'll see you guys next time. Bredo Live out.